Hi, this is MXUX. Um, on February 29, a few days ago, the SEC settled its investigation into uh, Lordstown Motors. And as you know, there was a DOJ and SEC investigation. And mind you, the company and the principals, and the, we're going to mention Steve Burns here, all had to pay to meet the demands of the SEC and um, subpoenas and so forth related to this. Well, there's been a solution to the SEC. They settled. Um, this is the summary. The fines were waived for Lordstown Motors, the corporation. Uh, they just credited the class action suits paid of $26 million uh, and said that uh, they were even on the money. So uh, as far as the bankruptcy goes, there's no um, loss of cash, uh, whatever remaining cash is there. Um, they uh, will go over the findings here, but uh, Burns, CEO Burns, strongly denies the SEC charges, okay? Um, the accounting firm got a 80K fine, which seems to me to be pretty insignificant. And uh, Lordstown Motors, the corporation, and the president executive staff, they had no comment, they didn't, uh, accept or deny the charges. They just let it go. So um, that's what we have. As far as I'm concerned, this is just, you know, this was har harassment from the start. At the end of this presentation, which is going to be short, I'm going to show three clips of the CEO of Ford doing exactly the same thing that Steve Burns did with a much inferior product which ends which ends up taking it out of production uh, w of which he received no charges from the DOJ or the SEC okay and um, I have done many videos on Steve Burns and what exactly he said and what he did not say and over the nature of these pre-orders and this was unsubstantiated. This was created in whole by Hindenburg. And according to the nationals in India who are investigating a Hindenburg expose there, uh, George Soros is behind Hindenburg. As you can see from the thumbnail of this video that Donald Trump, not a political channel, uh, but Donald Trump was responsible for the creation of Lordstown Motors. He is a sworn... Uh, George Soros hates Donald Trump. Uh, so I call this the uh, Lordstown Motors playbook. They're using it against Tesla. As you can see, um, Elon Musk is being attacked uh, by the DOJ and the SEC. Okay? And just as Carl Icahn someone who was in a prime position uh, to rescue, be a white knight to Lordstown Motors and get it into production, who could certainly have done it, who was uh, the chairman of the board of Lordstown Motors at the time this took place, had worked with I Icon as, the, as one of the heads of his automotive group. So if you don't think there was a relationship there, and if you don't think that Icon was not a potential, I, I am, I'm making the claim that Icon was a potential white knight. He was attacked also by Hindenburg. As you may recall, everybody, I scratched my head. Why? Why would they attack Carl Icon? What, that makes no sense, you know? And um, they attacked him again. The same playbook, the Lordstown playbook. And what these attacks do is they damage the stock and then they instigate a SEC investigation. 
And you know how the SEC follows the lead of this company that is private, that has four people working for it, that publishes questionable data, and again, who according to the uh, Indian nationals is under the direction of or behest of George Soros, um, this is the Lord Sound Motors playbook. And let me just say, Elon Musk is facing the same thing. Uh, this tangent uh, attack can be seen in the Hindenburg attack on Block. Okay? Cash App. And who heads Cash App? Jack Dorsey. Who invented Twitter? Who is rich? Who is a personal friend of Elon Musk? Who could come in? to rescue Elon Musk in the Twitter uh, uh, situation. Again, the Lordstown map uh, comes in, uh, the Lordstown playbook, and he's attacked. And what this attack does, lowers his stock price, puts a muzzle on him, and starts an SEC investigation, makes his board clamp down on him, and there you go. The support's gone. And uh, that avenue uh, for Musk is closed. And I want to just add, with the block thing, and I did a video on this, I don't know how many people watched it, Larry Summers was on the board of block for 10 years. He's a former Secretary of the Treasury. And the SEC is investigating him. It's a joke. As if, and they said there was criminal activities, as if Larry Summers would be involved in criminal activities or sit on the board of a company. Uh, anyway. This is the Lordstown Motors playbook. Uh, this is political motivation. Uh, this is manipulation of the stock market, in my opinion. And there's other players in this. And uh, you can see my other videos. BlackRock had some roles in the demise of uh, Lordstown Motors, as uh, and many uh, former executives from... Uh, BlackRock are working for Joe Biden in the White House right now, and you can see my videos on that. But uh, in any case, the uh, political motivation here is clear on my point. And, you know, the SEC and the DOJ have been weaponized. And again, not a political channel, don't have a political dog in this fight. But I just want to tell everybody that this is hurting retail investors. Uh, and that's who it's damaging, and it, and uh, these political actors do not care how many people are wiped out or how much money is lost. Uh, and I can say that uh, you know the people um, uh, who are voting uh, in the Lordstown district and people who lost money in Lordstown need to take a look at this political angle. And J. D. Vance sat on his hands, did nothing. So I think he needs to answer for his absence of action. I believe he's a phony. He acts like he's an everyman. He lives in a private community in a multi-million dollar house. Anyway, I, di I digress. Let me just get into this. Uh, we'll go for Lordstown, which Burns fired in 2019, was a SPAC. Uh, during the... During the uh, merger the creation of the company and afterwards as you recall there were many presentations does done by burns and i have parsed each and every one and at no point did he say there were orders this is absolutely spun whole cloth this is this is completely made up okay based on the hindenburg report hindenburg report some idiot third party with four people working in it, okay? Who answers to no one, who has no transparency, who, who we don't know, who's funding them, how they make money, nothing, okay? Uh, a lawyer, uh, <coughs> during the, before the merger, Burns and the firm made materially false and misleading statements about Lordstown's business, regulators said. See my videos on this, that is untrue. A lawyer for Lordstown, which did not admit or deny SEC findings, declined to comment. So they just, they again have pending litigation against Foxconn. They are not going to make any, any comments that could be used against them in court. 
Uh, the firm agreed to a cease and desist order, which means stop making these statements, which is irrelevant at this point in time. Uh, Burns said the SEC settlement with Lordstown Motors falsely char characterized his actions. This is absolutely, positively correct. Steve Burns was a sacrificial lamb uh, to these uh, political actors. And... Um, I'll just uh, I'll just say that uh, this is uh, totally wrong. Uh, uh, let me. Uh, this is what Burns's quote is: "I categorically reject the suggestion that my actions constitute wrongdoing." Absolutely correct. His intent and his actions involve no wrongdoing. His words were parsed by Jim Cramer and others, and, and you can see on my Patreon, I have a video of how uh, MSNBC, uh, M uh, CNBC and MSNBC, there were manipulations of the timing of the release and re-release of videos that uh, uh, tampered with this whole process as well. Uh, but anyway, the, the, the point being, um, this was a false characterization. This was a media attack on Steve Burns, on Lordstown Motors, uh, with political motivations. And, of course, uh, Steve Burns uh, did not commit any false actions. I mean, his intent... Steve Burns was creating... Um, let me let me just put this in a nutshell here and digress for a minute. We've reached a point uh, with battery energy density right now where you have to have a certain size battery pack to reduce production costs. You can see Musk is going into the Model 2 uh, with the unboxed. Uh, uh, th there's a struggle to lower manufacturing costs of EVs to make them more affordable. Uh, everyone's looking at the battery. Everyone's looking at the body. Um, the only person that really knew what they're doing is Steve Burns. He's looking at the drivetrain, the hub motor drive system that he developed and perfected, and the control system for that reduces the part count on an EV by thousands of parts. It simplifies the manufacturing process by orders of magnitude, uh, at mass production, this is the answer to lowering EV costs, okay, for the foreseeable future, in my opinion. Uh, Steve Burns has acquired all the IP of Lordstown Motors, so hopefully he can relaunch this, but I can tell you, um, this is the key to getting EV costs down. Uh, and... The, in, the initial design of the Lordstown Motors Endurance uh, was the answer. And at mass production and mass producing uh, the hub motors and perfecting the, the thermal management and everything else, this is the answer to lower cost EVs, which was, you know, killed in the crib. The baby was killed in the crib, drowned in the bathtub, whatever you want to call it. Um, and by false accusations, uh, accusations and a politically motivated campaign to destroy this company because of the political association with Donald Trump. Um, and, of course, Steve Burns uh, rejects any suggestion. He, he did nothing wrong. He was, he was had a, uh, I am telling you, uh, I, I wouldn't, you know, they say that, uh, Elon's working on a new drive system for the Model 2. Now, he's wedded to the conventional, you know, rotor stator design. But if he were to use hub motors, Elon, if you're listening, this is the key. Okay? And, and lowering the production cost of those hub motors through mass production. Um, so the SEC order for Lordstown to this disgorge 25 million of ill-gotten gains was deemed satisfied by its payments in class action lawsuits. So there is no financial settlement associated with this. Burns has denied all wrongdoing. The accounting firm 
uh, which was involved in the SPAC and other things, $80,000 in civil penalties, um, discouragement and interest, as well as to improve its policies, blah, 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 separate SEC res uh, resolution. So uh, the accounting firm was not part of $80,000 is trivial, okay? So this, this whole case ends up being uh, the big nothing that it was from the very start. And this settlement and uh, the timing of it, it just shows you with the election cycle, where we're at in the election cycle. And um, I would just uh, say to uh, shareholders that were um, damaged in this debacle, um, for the finale, Lordstown Motors does have a lawsuit against Foxconn for breach of contract because they were ready to go for production. SoftBank was ready to invest in this technology, in this truck, in this company. And Terry Gao, running for president of Taiwan, um, who is pro-unification of Taiwan with mainland China, and we all know how China feels about Trump, I am convinced that him acting as the emeritus chairman of the board of uh, Foxconn put the kibosh on this deal. Now, hopefully, uh, Lordstown Motors will win that suit and there'll be some recovery for the shareholders. Who knows what the outcome could be? But I would call on J.D. Vance and other political actors in Lord that, that are responsible for the Lordstown area they need to revoke the tax abatements and other uh, things that were given to Foxconn uh, for putting this plan up. And that deal needs to be uh, uh, investigated as far as the approval by the government uh, Cephas project, okay? And there, uh, Lordstown uh, needs to call Foxconn on the carpet because they are in the wrong here and they violated... They breached the contract. They hurt that community. And I want to tell you, I'm not political, but I'm just going to say what turned, what started as a, a, an effort to revive this plant, revive this community, provide jobs, uh, provide a technical hub in this area, which so badly needs it, which was so damaged uh, by every previous uh, policy, NAFTA and everything else, uh, this all these good intentions and the intentions of Steve Burns to bring to fruition a technology he had been working on for 12 years. Um, these were all good intentions, which were, you know, slayed by this political motivation and this political mudslinging and uh, the weaponization of the business media, the weaponization of... Uh, uh, Hindenburg, the weaponization of the SEC, the weaponization of the DOJ, and this is uh, built on a foundation of sand. There, there, I have followed this uh, company from the start, and I can tell you that there is not a grain of, uh, of substantiation for any of this. Uh, the only substantiation is the political motivation and um, I think it's sad, and I think that, uh, you know, the sad part is people in the community were hurt, retail shareholders were hurt, 401ks were hurt, retirement funds were hurt, um, for no good reason. So, I'm just going to close at that. And again, this is not a political channel, but I am just simply pointing out what I think is just criminal and should be investigated by Congress. And, you know, J.D. Vance is going to do nothing, okay? He needs to be voted out of office. Now, I'm going to follow this with just a few short clips of the CEO of Ford and the uh, principals involved in the manufacturing of the Lightning which was the competitive BEV pickup truck, uh, which uh, Lordstown Motors was going up against, 
the CEO of Ford and the principals of Ford did exactly the same thing that uh, Steve Burns did. None of them were called on the carpet by the SEC. None of them were called on the carpet by Hindenburg. None of them were called on the carpet by the DOJ. This is... <sighs> This is just shows how hypocritical all of this is. And by the way, <clears throat> the reason that Lightning <clears throat> is out of production is because it's an inferior vehicle. Okay, this is MXUX. I hope you liked the video. And I'm just going to close with this. Uh, good luck in the market. Watch these clips, uh, very short clips of Ford. Uh, and they're doing exactly the same thing that... Uh, Steve Burns did with absolutely no repercussions. We're really on a mission at Ford to lead an electric and digital revolution for many, not few. And I have to say, the shining light for us at Ford is this beautiful lightning made right down the road in Dearborn, right here in the state of Michigan, already the leader of all EV pickup trucks in our industry in the United States. Take that, Elon Musk. The macro picture today, when GDP isn't as strong as expected, when jobs perhaps are not growing at quite the... ...is, can I get more? Oh, interesting. Okay, so you're trying to marry up the supply-demand equation at the moment. I'm interested in, into ultimately, therefore, how you're setting yourself apart. What is it that makes them go, yes, for pro over anything else? Well, so we have this amazing backbone of the business that we have, all these commercial work trucks that we... ...and battery electric, doing all that supply chain problems that we have amount that we had seen, are people wanting to update, electrify, invest in their businesses? Absolutely. What we're seeing, Caroline, is what we said a second quarter is there is still three years of pent-up demand. The macro picture today, when GDP isn't as strong as expected, when jobs perhaps are not growing at quite the anticipated amount that we had seen, are people wanting to update, electrify, invest in their businesses? Absolutely. What we're seeing, Caroline, is what we said a second quarter is there is still three years of pent-up demand mm. for the vehicles, internal combustion and battery electric, doing all that supply chain problems that we had. And so we see customers for super duties and transits, both North America and Europe, looking for vehicles. My biggest challenge with most of my customers, hey customers, is can I get more? Oh, interesting. Okay, so you're trying to marry up the supply-demand equation at the moment. I'm interested in into ultimately, therefore, how you're setting yourself apart. What is it that makes them go, yes, for pro over anything else? Well, so we have this amazing backbone of the business that we have, all these commercial work trucks that we do for North America and Europe. We're number one in Europe for eight years in a row. We have 40% of the commercial and government share for full-size trucks and vans. We're the big guy. And what we're doing now is expanding in not just vehicles. In a connected world, it's vehicles, software, service, charging, financing, netting that all together so that we have this amazing business, a one-stop shop for our customers, just the easy button. Ford CEO has made the decision to stop producing EVs and focus on affordable gas cars instead. The F-150 Lightning, their popular EV pickup truck, is also going out of production. The CEO stated that EVs are not profitable and are causing chaos.